Good morning and welcome back to my studio. I'm going to be putting the finishing touches on this Batchawana birches piece today. So this is mostly done, but uh, the final stage of any painting is the, for me, the most fun and the most important part. So I'm going to show you what I think this needs to take it from being kind of okay to just to that final level. So stick around and we'll get to that. Okay, so this piece right now is actually looking really nice and it's actually at a stage where, you know, you might actually think it's finished, um, but it's not. There's still a fair bit of stuff I need to do from this and some of it I, some of it I know from experience um, that will just make this better um, and some things it's to do with kind of a whole design aspect and uh, unifying the painting and composition. So the one thing right now, you may not be able to tell that from the photo, but there's still a fair bit of the red, uh, that initial red undertone of the canvas peeking through. Um, and one of the things that I really liked in my photo here is the fact of those blues of the distant hill, um, that that kind of kind of playing off against the oranges and reds is the complementary color, but it also kind of ties together the whole canvas, um, picking up these we have all these little short strokes of color of blues and violets in the sky um, we have the blue and violet in the birch trees uh, but some of those little short strokes of blue and violet um, down in here will just help unify the painting and make right now it's kind of like there's like the horizon and up and then the horizon and down and they look like two very different um, color palettes involved so i need to harmonize those or, unify those by putting harmonious colors down here. The other thing that I'd like to do is indicate a little bit more of lighter greens on these, um, these evergreen trees here. And I just know from experience that I just love the way that purple and green interact together. So anywhere that I see um, greens in a painting, I'm often going to go in and put touches of purple in there because that's just a really, really pleasing uh, color combination to the eye. And then finally, I need to resolve the sun. The sun is kind of blocked in here fairly well, uh, but again, just coming in and really brightening up, brightening it up to give it the punch and putting the sun, sun effect on some of these darker trees. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll uh, just going to go to my palette and mix my colors. And when I get back and start painting, we'll turn the camera on again. Okay, so I've mixed my color now. I'll just turn the camera down so you can see my palette. Um, but I've got kind of going from these kind of lime greens into these kind of turquoisey greens and then greeny blues and then right into a blue and then into a purple and then into a kind of a um, magenta and purple mix. And those colors are basically the same colors that appear in the birch tree, um, in the birch trees, and also in the sky, in the sky. Although they're at their lightest up here, they're a little bit darker here, and then they're even darker um, on my palette here for what I'm going to put in here. But putting those little touches of color in there are going to really help unify the painting um, and make the top half and the bottom half look like they belong together. Now it, at this stage, it sometimes takes me a little bit of mixing to get the right color and the right value because I'm interested in how it, how the color is reacting with what's on the canvas already. And I think and I have that kind of a greeny blue. I think it needs to be a little bit more of a cool blue tending towards uh, ultramarine blue. Okay, I think that's actually it. And so at this stage, I'm just gonna kind of, I'm, I'm going a little bit by my photo where I can see these patterns of blue going through, um, but I'm also just doing it a lot based on what my eye is seeing and how my eye is reacting to that blue on the, on the canvas. 
but I can see already just where that blue is kind of next to the birches in the sky. All of a sudden it looks like those areas relate to each other a little more. And I'm also careful, I want to leave kind of a lot of opportunities still where that red of the canvas shows through, where I have the ability to put in other colors. Um, and so at this stage, kind of uh, goes, I go f slow, fairly slow. I think in terms of less is more, I can always come back and add some later because however much this impacts the painting right now, which is actually a fair bit, it'll impact it less when there's more of those colors other places. And I think the colors will gradually um, gradate to more of a greeny blue in some areas. And as I say, I'm actually, I'm looking at my photo occasionally just for ideas. Cause I basically, one of the things that's most important to me is color. So when I have a photo where I really, really like the color relationships, um, I'm going to refer back to that photo over the course of the painting, just to see what those colors are. Often, even if I've radically changed the composition, I'm still really interested in the color relationships that kind of drew me to the scene in the first place. And so I'm going to continue just looking for areas to introduce this. Now this is going to get much darker down in this corner, further away from the sun. And there's not much light going to be hitting it. And we're looking into kind of that deep forested area. Already I can see that I'm really uh, liking the impact of these blues next to these oranges and reds um, that are kind of predominate and next to the, to the reddish brown that's the base coat of this canvas. Well, sorry for abruptly stopping there. I guess my camera had run out of storage. It's the only problem with shooting with the iPhone is you're somewhat limited on how much storage you have. But as you can see, I've come in and I've put a lot of blues, purples, mauves, and bluey greens in here. I've also brightened up the greens on um, the evergreen foliage. Now, one other thing I want to do, I want to suggest that there's more of these kind of birches kind of further back in the background and also kind of just adjust the way that this one disappears a little bit so it's just a little more um, subtle so it doesn't just all of a sudden stop so you can see little bits of it just poking through my paints have actually dried out a little bit from the weekend next similar to the way they were again I wanted to kind of appear that as we get as we get lower and lower that foliage gets a little thicker and the birch tree gradually disappears and also I want to give the the appearance for some of these birch trees that they also they're just short so they don't actually come all the way up to the top of the painting they're just tiny little birch saplings here in the background. And that also just, again, to do with the unity of the painting, it kind of echoes some of those lighter colors down here um, to break up that kind of pattern effect of all of the, the foliage. Um, and I could, when I actually blocked this in, if you remember, I think I actually said that some of these would be birches and they were kind of indicated with the purple when I did the underpainting as opposed to the black. Now these are not quite, these are just slightly lighter now 
than the um, those bluish strokes that I've put to indicate kind of the distant hill, but they will get lighter um, on each side, on both the shadow side and the sunward facing side. And I think that's just going to, just that little bit of these little tiny vertical lighter shapes appearing and disappearing will help kind of unify the painting. I mentioned before about the whole concept of enough so it's like how light do these shapes have to be well they need to be light enough so I don't want them to be quite as light or bright as these foreground birches because they're further back um, but they have to be light enough so that they clearly stand out from those blues and mauves of just the background distant help but the one thing I know the way to approach enough is to do it slowly and gradually and again working with oils it's all usually better to go from dark to light it's certainly easier to go from dark to light so I can take kind of baby steps in terms of how light I have to be um, and then just keep going over with lighter and lighter paint I know I'm gonna go have to, I'm gonna have to go lighter than it than it is already, but I actually want these all to look kind of similar, so I'm gonna do them with similar colors. And then once I've got all of these kind of blocked in with the mauves and the lighter blues, then I'll decide how light it has to be on the edge. And then I'll have to decide whether I want to actually paint a rim light on them or just kind of leave them kind of less much less defined than the uh, the foreground birches okay we're already starting to show up and it's a little bit like Birches that are a little bit farther back. And this one, this one actually is going to continue all the way up. Probably one of the only ones of these kind of s smaller ones that will do that. And these, you can see, I'm not painting with nearly as much um, attention as the larger birches, not because they're further back. I actually don't want them to draw a lot of attention. Um, not even necessarily as birch trees, but just they're just vertical lines or shapes that help break up the composition and help direct help direct the eye upward and unify the sky and the bottom half because these strokes and colors are going to be similar to the strokes and colors that appear up here. So I'm gonna, I'll shut the camera off for now. I'm gonna go over and finish uh, resolving all of these little tiny birches um, and then I'll resolve the sun. I can't really show you me resolving the sun, unfortunately, because of the contrast of these really, really bright, intense lights against everything else. Um, the iPhone just tends to, 
to pick all of the subtle detail up in here as um, white so it doesn't really show up well on video. We just had thunder, we got a bit of a storm going on here. Okay, I'm gonna shut the camera off and we'll come back when I've got a little bit more done. Okay, so this piece is almost finished now and you can see, I'm actually gonna change the angle here so that you can see the painting a little better so we're not on such a huge angle. I won't need to stand in front of it. Where am I going? No, oh, we want it this way. There we go. Okay, hopefully you can see see this and see enough color in it now, but you can see that I've added all of these blues. So there's blues, bluey greens, purples, magentas, mauves, all down through here. And again, I'm always thinking there's these pathways of these yellow leaves and red leaves, and these leaves here leading us to the sun. You've got all of these little short strokes, which are echoing the kind of strokes that are up in the sky, which uh, they're harmonious strokes, which means they're similar. When you put similar strokes all over the painting, that unifies the painting to make it look like it all goes together. And I've also come back in here around the sun uh, and really just really brightened up the white of the sun and brightened up the yellows, the reds, as well as putting the sun's influence on all of these uh, different branches. Um, I've also kind of beefed up some of the yellows here. By that I mean I've got, made the yellows more bright and intense and made the reds more bright and intense as we come closer to the sun. I also broke up the line of the horizon here. It was like a pretty solid line. So just by taking a few of the uh, lighter sky color strokes down into here to where they meet with these lighter birches, it allows them to kind of, it kind of just disappear so it doesn't just stop. And again, these little light strokes down in the bottom kind of echo the light strokes in the sky. And I think this piece is actually finished now. I hope it's finished because uh, Esther, the owner of Gallery on the Lake, is coming by tomorrow to pick it up. And it is going to be going into their show to celebrate Canada's 150th anniversary. Um, so that's it for this piece. That's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. I welcome your comments and questions. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and please share it with your artist friends if you think they would find this helpful. I am Tim Packer and I thank you for your time.